A powerful stick burner you will become. Henceforth, you shall be known as Darth Vader. Rise. My 24 by 40 inch Lone Star Grills offset smoker has finally arrived. And of course, I named him Vader because this pit is badass. And mine has the newly developed smoke collector added to it. So that should help avoid any hot spot over on the left hand side near the stack. It might not look that big on camera, but I'm telling you, I had to rearrange all of my setup just to be able to get it in frame. And you can see it still doesn't even completely fit. I quickly want to thank the fellas from the Iola Car Show for helping me out and getting this pit over to my studio. In the crate, this pit weighed 1,555 pounds. This pit can't be delivered on a straight truck with a drop gate. So you're gonna need a forklift or a heavy duty tractor to get this pit out. This is the third pit that I've uncrated from Lone Star Grills and trust me, that crate is put together well. You're gonna need yourself a sawzall and some type of hammer or a good old crowbar. It honestly only took me about 20 minutes to get this pit out of that crate. Now before I can actually start seasoning this pit up, we gotta do the assembly. Open up the door, and we gotta get this handle off. You're gonna need a couple 9 16 inch wrenches. Take off the nut stickers through the damper. I always have plenty of washers and lock washers around, so I'm gonna put them on here, and that hopefully will keep that handle tight. Get our washer on, lock washer, and let's spin on this nut. Get a wrench on the handle side, and then just go ahead and spin her tight. There we are, assembled. Whew, that's a pretty hard assembly. Now this next step, it's always good to have a good pair of gloves because you're going to be grabbing some steel. Get some cooking spray and we're going to season it up. And I'm spraying down everything inside the firebox and inside the chamber. And try as hard as you can not to get any of this cooking spray on the outside of the paint. And here's one tip for you, when you're spraying down any of the stuff that comes out of the pit. Don't spray towards it because you're gonna get some misting and you're gonna get it on that paint. Whenever I'm spraying down the doors, I typically just spray a little bit in the center, but I use a rag and smear it around. And I just put a very light coat on the door lids because if you put too much, it's gonna start to drip and run down the outside of your pit. When it comes to the griddle, make sure you're coating both sides and be prepared because that thing is really heavy. To start up this fire today, I'm using a half a chimney of charcoal. We wanna start the seasoning nice and slow and we do not wanna exceed 250 degrees. Remember, you're curing this paint so you wanna keep those temperatures low. If not, you could start seeing that paint start to peel in the future. Before I get the charcoal in, let's take a look at this half inch firebox. The reason why I have a half inch firebox is because I live up in the frozen tundra. This steel is thick. The door, the flanges, they're only quarter inch, but this is half inch plate. And after cooking on Russ's and seeing how this fire management basket works, this is a must. It makes things so easy and it keeps your fire nice and combined. We even have a grate in here so we can do some grilling. Now the chamber itself, that's still quarter inch steel. And after I got the tuning plate sprayed down, we started the first one about a half an inch away from the firebox, then doubled it to an inch, then two inches on the third one, and then four inches finally on the last tuning plate. That's how Russ has his setup and it's working good for him so I'm gonna try it the same way. Now like I said earlier this does have the new smoke collector. Now I didn't ask Chris about this but you might have saw this pit in a video Chris did a couple weeks ago. He just didn't have my logo on there yet. Now having the mag tires or the off-road package on this pit has made it a lot easier to move around. You just hook up the handle and it steers real easy, but it's not a very big turn radius. So you'll get used to that. Once you get it going, it rolls real simple. I also have the standard grate and this is pretty easy to put up. You do have to turn your tire, pull it up a little with the pressure and then that bracket will hold it right up. 
And I also have the ball valve put on here because it just makes cleanup a lot easier. And the bottom shelf works great for throwing some splits underneath there or bag of charcoal or whatever you want but it's great storage on this pit. And this is prepped if I ever wanted to add the gas assist. And the last thing is I got the tie down hook because I do plan to travel around with this pit. <laughs> You'll certainly see this pit at the Isle of Car Show next year. So Daniel, make the five hour trip over and I'll even let you throw a split in the firebox. Yeah, I'll do that for you. So come on over. Our charcoal is well lit. It's time to get it in the firebox and sprinkle it right in the center. And at first, I'm just putting in two very small red oak splits. I just want to make sure that this temperature doesn't spike on me. I want to start just building a small little coal bed. Get one right here and one right here. And we're also going to leave all the doors open on it right now until we start actually building a fire in that firebox. Now I had to turn on my exhaust because you can see we're already starting to develop a little bit of smoke. But before I close up this pit, I want to make sure that those splits are fully ignited. One really nice feature having this fire management basket is that you can put a few splits off to the side just to heat up. You don't have to worry about your fire falling over and igniting them. I'm happy the way these splits are burning. We can go ahead and close up the door. And I'll open up the damper all the way. Now that I closed up the door, you can see all the smoke is starting to push through the chamber. So we'll close up the lid. Obviously, I'm not burning very clean yet, but that's okay because we're still just building a fire. With that firebox being a half an inch and the chamber being a quarter inch, it might take a while to get around that 230, 240 degrees. It's been about a half an hour and we're running right around 135 degrees. I'm gonna throw in two more of those smaller splits. Open up our door and we're just gonna take these two and get them in there right away. You can see one of them's already burnt down. This is pretty dry wood. As long as we got the door open, throw a couple more in here to dry out. And once both of these splits are fully lit, then I'll go ahead and close up the door. All right, that's looking pretty good. We can go ahead and close the door. Now that fire should bring this pit up to about 200 degrees. And then I'll run it for about 45 minutes and I'll decide, am I gonna add one split or do I need to add two? Again, I'm using really small splits today because I don't wanna overbuild this fire. So we've been about 40 minutes and this pit did get up to 200 degrees, but now we're down to about 180 degrees. So it's a good time to put in a couple more splits. Knock our coals around a little bit and throw a couple splits in. Remember I told you about not spraying too much? I hardly had any of that Pam sprayed on this door, but look at, it's already starting to build up. This half inch firebox running at 200 degrees, it's warm, but it's not crazy hot to the touch. At this time of year, there's absolutely nothing better than sitting and watching a fire. Those splits are lit. Let's close up the door and I'll keep doing the same thing. I'll just watch this temperature. For this first three to four hours, I don't want to really go over 220 degrees. So this is a perfect time to pour yourself a beer and watch some temps. I've been running Vader for five hours now, and I started out and held it right around 200, 210 degrees for a couple hours. And while that half inch firebox started to come up to temp, then it was really easy to hold it right around 230 up to 240 degrees. And I'm very impressed how well that half inch firebox contains that heat. So it really helped to use smaller splits to help cure that paint. And for the whole five hours, I could smell that paint cure. And don't be surprised one bit that you continue to smell that in the next couple cooks. For this last hour, I'm gonna push it up and ride right around that 250 degrees. And just remember, do this slow and at a low temp. Because if you do it right, that paint's gonna last a very long time. And one thing you should know, when you spray the lid and it's starting to kind of adhere, you might have to kind of give it a little pop to open it up. That's just the cooking oil starting to bake on and kind of developing a seal. And same with the firebox, because I sprayed it, you kind of got to give it a little tug. This little fire, we were able to hold this pit at 225 degrees. I'm starting to hear a little snap, crackle, and pop. These sticks are lit. And now let's just take a look at our griddle. Yeah, it's starting to develop a little bit of patina, 
but we got a couple more cooks on it before it's gonna look like a griddle top. Now you can see we're just under 225 degrees. The chamber, it's starting to look a little darker. You can see that the tuning plates, they're starting to patina up a little bit along with the grates. One thing I forgot to mention about this pit is that you can put water in the chamber. This can become a water smoker and that'll help stabilize the temperatures inside the pit. It's been a pretty steady blue smoke through that stack the whole time. When I do my first cook on Vader, that's when I'm gonna actually check and see what the temperatures look like inside the chamber. I really wanna thank Lone Star Grills for sending me Vader. This pit has been my dream pit for a couple years now and the force is strong in this pit. Trust me, if you're even remotely thinking about getting an offset, make sure you check out LoneStarGrills.com. If you're like me and you got bad shoulders, don't even hesitate for a minute. Add that counterweight because this lid is super light. I have the pellet grill and this thing is bigger than the pellet grill, but it feels lighter when you're opening it up. The great thing about Kieran Paint is Kegerator gets a little bit of workout because he ain't cooking any food. Well, that's all I got. Roll the nation.